Joyce Mitchell owns her own documentary production company, For You Productions. She's here tonight to present the second Governor's Award for the evening. Please welcome Joyce Mitchell. Hello, everyone. Tonight, I'm taking a sentimental journey. The license plate on his car reads, Old News. But there's nothing old about this man's passion for broadcasting, his passion for storytelling, or the passion for mentoring and teaching people. People like me. I was a green newcomer to the industry in 1976 when I came knocking at the door of KCRA with this experienced newsman greeting me, a newsman who was going to be anchoring the newscast I was soon to be producing. I produced that 11 o'clock newscast with Stan Atkinson for about 13 years between the 11 o'clock and the evening news. And I must say the man taught me a lot. And I'm standing here today in this industry, still working in this industry because of him and in spite of him because <laughs> producer and talent don't always agree. But one thing very, very powerful came out of that was love, lots of love. It was a family relationship in that newsroom. We loved each other. And my friends are here tonight, and I see them all around. And those of you who work in newsrooms know what the power of love is in those newsrooms. We got each other's back. And Stanley, yes. Stanley had my back because he wanted me to be good. He wanted me to learn how to write. And somehow, all these years later, it's 40 years, I'm still here and I'm still doing it. So he must have done something right. His uh, participation, his contribution to the industry, remarkable. He taught me we all have a responsibility to use the gift of television to give back to the community. And for a look back on this sentimental journey, I, let's take a look right now. A guy who's been in the TV anchor chair for more than 40 years, which turned out to be a really ratty ass old anchor chair. But tonight, big guy, it's your night. There are places I remember all my life. your license plate, 3 to 13. Well, guess what? Tonight, we're going from 3 to 13, live from channel 3 to 13. And Dave and Lois, how are you guys? The funny words here, we, we took a boat and we have some plaques for you. We'll have delivered later, Stanley, but uh, in addition to all the awards you're getting, uh, we have honored you as the grand poobah of pontificating, <laughs> the meister of media, and the sultan of sartorial splendor. A three-time Emmy recipient, Stan, has reported from 18 turbulent countries. Thai Cambodian frontier. He had 31 overseas assignments. They included war-torn Afghanistan, Somalia, and El Salvador. How many more families are going to have to mourn their loved ones in this seemingly endless and witless war? The only clearly identifiable enemy here is the Vietnamese army that's out there, five or ten miles away from the border camp. It all looks so deceivingly placid, but at any moment, the streets of Mogadishu can turn into mean streets. Gonna take a sentimental journey 
gonna fetch my heart at you. Stan used his star power to make the world a better place. He was a key fundraiser for the California Vietnam Veterans Memorial at the state capitol. Stan, you remain the top dog, the legend, the icon of the broadcast television news industry. Congratulations, you taught us all a lot. This is the highest award from the Academy to Stan Atkinson. Uh, thank you, Joycey. You gonna give me something? <laughs> Keith, you're beautiful. Not as her, beautiful as her, but I'll be happy to take it from you too. <laughs> thank you. You know, this is, this is really a big boy Emmy compared to what they used to be. Yeah. I'm not complaining. This was, it was wonderful to have them in the, in the 1980s, but uh, they were a little more meager than they are today. So uh, congratulations to all the winners tonight. Uh, like Wayne Friedman says, you get a tingle up your leg if you win. It is exciting. And then lots of luck, because it's back to the grind on Monday. <laughs> but it, enjoy it as, as long as you can. About that kid that was up there, he was 19, it was 1951, the station was KRSN in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Little did he know what he was in for, but he was in for 46 years of the most exciting time any person could ever have. Not just to be in the business, not just to be doing news, but because everything for us from the 50s onward was brand new because television was still new. There were lots of people who in the 50s weren't sure they could ever watch television because they couldn't afford a TV set. They were so expensive. I remember in the army in the, in the 50s going to one person's house in the block that had television on that we could watch on Saturday nights. But we grew into something that we learned to be very proud of. And I was God fortunate to work for stations that really made a commitment to news. The Kellys, Gene, Bob, John, and Channel 13, KOVR, and working for the great Jim Sanders. Those were primo experiences for a news person to have. For the Kellys and Channel 3, they learned very quickly that what made money, what made them a success, economically and ratings-wise, was to make a good product hey, corporate America in television, you make a better product, you spend a little money, you'll do better, believe me. <laughs> the Cullies could be very valuable giving those lessons today. We, uh, it's funny, when we talk now, those of us who haven't fallen into the ooze yet because we're so old. Uh, but when we talk and we look back on that time, we had no damn idea that we were as good and that it was good. What we were doing was as good as it was. And it was because we were given our head by the people we worked for, the people who signed the checks, the people who gave us the impetus to go out and do yeah, hey, maybe a minute 30. Not 20, not 25, not having to fight for 35, but a minute 20. If the story held up, if it had a beginning and a middle and end, and told the story, it was valuable, you know, sell it to the desk and do it. That was what television used to be like. Those of us alumni now, we understand how blessed we were. And, uh, we truly were. I, in many ways, for one thing, 
the, the people I worked with. I mean, I was always part of a fabulous team. Producers, writers, editors, shooters. People who would go to godforsaken places with me who would either likely get shot or maybe get held up and robbed or kidnapped. But nevertheless, they were gung-ho to do what we did. And the women. Along came in the 70s this idea, well, the 80s, that maybe television news would look better if the anchor teams looked like an older man and his second wife. <laughs> How is it that women screamed louder and laughed louder than anybody else? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know something? I think it worked. I think it worked. <laughs> it was a hell of a lot more interesting than just one old guy standing, sitting out there, or one young guy sitting out there reading the news. And then there was the evolution of the two guys. But then that went by the boards. Actually, Fred Lacoste and I were almost your lovely anchor team at Cron in the 80s, the early 80s. And long at that time came the evolution of the newsroom consultants. We called them insultants. And uh, that was where the idea came that yeah, maybe male anchors, maybe we should try something different. Although I would have loved to work with Fred, and we would have had a good time, and I think we'd done a good product. We moved on, and I was blessed to work with Ann Clark at KFTY, Channel 50, Marsha Branwin at KTVU, Channel 2, Murray Richardson, Heidi Tong, Susan Gregory, who's here tonight, Love you, babe. <laughs> Margaret Pelly, Carol Bland, all at Channel 3, and then Jennifer Whitney at KOVR 13. And in the weather department, I worked with Betty Vasquez and Shelley Monahan at Channel 3. And actually, yes, her first job in television, Kelly Lang at KNBC Channel 4 doing the weather on the weekend on my newscast with Danny Villanueva doing sports. Thank you to all of them. You always made me look better. You always made me better because you were good journalists yourself. One uh, TV wonk said, Stan's the steak, and the ladies he has worked with, they're the sizzle. God bless that sizzle because it made life exciting. <laughs> it made wonderful, wonderful television, I think for those who enjoyed it. So let me say in passing, this is uh, because I will pass, and I can tell it's more than nap time for many of you. Um, uh, I truly thank the Academy for this. This came out of the blue. I had no clue. I had no even understanding or even suggestion in my head that this would happen. But thank you for making it happen. And uh, my family, my six kids, we miss Lance. You saw pictures of him at 34. He died suddenly with no explanation. He was a healthy boy, we thought. At the age of 34, he's still with us every day. But we have a vague and vibrant, vibrant and loving family. Six kids, 16 grandkids, and six greats. And they all think that this is pretty cool. That may be the best part of this whole thing for me, because now they think the, the old dude is OK <laughs> from this old dude. Thank you all very much. Thank you.